this morning, beginning with our duet. Praise the Lord. present help in time of trouble. Amen. You may be seated. God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in trouble. Thank you, ushers. God is, hallelujah, our refuge. our strength and furthermore he is a very present help in time of trouble I want to talk with this subject in mind this morning necessary help necessary Recently, the famed cosmologist Stephen Hawking passed, and there has been renewed interest with respect to his work due to his recent passing, and I was reading an article spoke of his life, of his teachings, of his beliefs, and as much of a genius as Stephen Hawkins was, he struck me in this that he said that with all of his learning, with all of his studying with respect to science, uh, he had come to the conclusion that though he could not prove that God did not exist, he was convinced of the fact that God was not that uh, with respect to uh, the universe and the forming of the universe, uh, the sustaining of the universe, that uh, the universe itself is self-sustaining. That uh, though he could not prove that God does not exist. Uh, much of his learning, much of his studying, uh, much of his delving into uh, the deep reservoirs of science had come to convince him uh, that God was not needed. And as I read that article, clear to me that there is the possibility that one can be both a genius and a fool at the same time. That, that it, it's, it's possible for one to be an educated genius to make significant contributions uh, to the realm of academia and science and yet be a fool simultaneously. And unless 
he came to a different position. I would submit to you this morning that Stephen Hawkins is exhibit one. To, to have come to the conclusion after all of those years of learning that God is not Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but it's almost stating uh, the obvious that in life we need help. In life, brothers and sisters, we need, it's not optional. We need help. Uh, without help in life, uh, we cannot and will not make it. No one can live this life uh, devoid of help, assistance from others. doctor, the nurse, perhaps the midwife uh, had not cared for you at birth. If your mother had not nursed you, you would not be here today. We need help. Uh, if the laborers had not uh, laid the rebar and the concrete uh, that, that we traveled down uh, to get here this morning, uh, we, we would not have made it as easily in our automobiles uh, as we would have. We would not made it would not have made it here as easily. Uh, we, we, we all need help from somewhere from time to time. None of us, brothers and sisters, are self-sufficient. And, and it makes a difference from whence your help comes. It makes a difference where your help comes from. Many of us know the hurt and the heartache of trusting in the wrong thing, trusting in the wrong person to provide us help. Many of us know what it is to have gone to friends and loved ones only to have them turn away, unable to help us. Many of us know what it is, brothers and sisters, uh, to look in our bank accounts, thinking that uh, the money is there, only to discover that we have insufficient funds. Life, my brothers and sisters, is filled uh, with obstacles, filled with high mountains filled with deep valleys and, and heavy burdens, burdens that are, are too weighty for any of us to bear alone. It's imperative in life. It is needed help that we must find, that we must discover, and we have that needed help in God God alone. As much as mama loves you, she can't always provide you with the help that you need. As much as daddy loves you, he can't always be there to provide you the help that you Grandmama, granddaddy, they can't be there at all times to provide you the help 
that you need. Oh, but this God of ours, this God of ours, brothers and sisters, the Bible says that God is our refuge and he is our strength, very present help in time of trouble. <laughs> so that there are some folk who run away from when they know you're in trouble. Some folk, you answer the phone when they call the first time and share their troubles with you. Perhaps you answer the third time. If you a good friend, you may answer the third time, but now the fourth time, now the fifth time, now the sixth. I have trouble of my own, and, and I can't deal with all of your problems and mine too, but this God of ours, he is our refuge, he is our strength, and he is a very present help. Hallelujah. In time of trouble, you can call on God and he never tires. He always answers the phone. He never blocks your number. Hallelujah. He doesn't send you to the voicemail. Anytime you call him, he picks up and he answers and he wants to know all about your trouble. He wants to know all about your problems. He wants to know all about your pain. He's a very present help in time of trouble. The Bible says that God, he is our that is to say, brothers and sisters, that God is a sound shelter. That God is a shelter in which you can trust and depend. This psalmist helps us to appreciate that in life, we need protection. That, that life, brothers and sisters, is filled with all kinds of problems and difficulties uh, that seek to weigh us down and indeed would take us out but for God. The doctor gives you negative report. You need a shelter in which you can hide. Satan constantly dogging your footsteps. You need a shelter in which you can hide. When you have more bills at the end of the month, then you do money. You don't know how you're going to make ends meet. You need a shelter in which you can hide. When, when, when children go wayward and they are determined uh, to have life live their own way and all you can do now is get on your knees and pray for them, you need a shelter in which the levees of life break and the water begins to sweep over your soul. You, you need a shelter in which you can hide. During World War II, as the war hung in the balance, there was songwriter who knew the Lord and 
which she wrote in times like these. You, you need a Savior. Did, did you hear that? In times like these, uh, you need an anchor. And so be very sure be very sure that your anchor grips and holds the solid rock. Brothers and sisters, when you look at the times in which we live, you need a Savior. When, when you look at what's going on in Washington, D.C., you need an anchor. You, you can't trust what's going on in Washington. You can't trust in what's going on in these various municipalities. You have to have your trust. Your anchor must be hooked and tied into Jesus. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This song us to appreciate why God is such a sound shelter in which we can hide. He, he, he calls upon him in this passage of scripture. He identifies God first as Elohim. And he, he helps us to understand and know that, that God is a sound shelter because he is the God of all power. Elohim. He is the almighty God. He, he is the God, brothers and sisters, uh, who created both the heaven and the earth. Despite what Stephen Hawking Thinks God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth. And he created it with the power of his word. And that same God, Elohim, through the agency of his son, now sustains the world and all that are therein. He is a sound refuge. Because he creates by the power of his word. Uh, by his word, he said, let there be, and, and light uh, came dancing forward. Uh, by his word, he said, uh, let there be, and, and the waters uh, separated from the earth. By his word, God made everything that is. By his word, by the power of his word, my brothers and sisters, and this same God, he is our refuge. And so what that should say to you is that no matter what comes against you, run to God, run to Jesus, and you will find safety there. If you're supervisor is giving you problems on the job some of us in here know all you gotta do is run to Jesus and hide in him and he knows how to handle who's trying to handle you if you're having trouble in your marriage there, there's somebody in here who can testify all you got to do is run to Jesus. Put it in his hands. Don't you try to handle it. Just go hide in the shelter. Hide under his wings and he will shelter you. He will hold you and he will touch what you can't handle. You, you, you have to understand that, that when life comes against you, need a shelter that you can depend on. And God, Elohim, because he has all power, he is a sound shelter. 
you know, they, they, they try uh, to build structures now uh, that are supposed to be able to handle uh, various types of uh, adverse winds and, and weather conditions. You know, they, they, they build houses in Florida now that are supposed to be able to withstand certain hurricane force winds. In, in San Antonio, excuse me, uh, in California, uh, you have to build houses and particularly buildings uh, to certain specification uh, so that uh, they can deal with uh, the earthquakes uh, that visit that region of the country every now and then. But at best, brothers and sisters, uh, we can build houses that can withstand hurricane force winds up to a, a certain mile an hour. And then even that structure will fall. At best, out in California, they, they, they can do everything they can uh, to build high rises. Uh, so that they, they may have a little sway to them, uh, but not buckle and fall uh, if an earthquake hits the city. But you let the magnitude of that earthquake be large enough. You let the epicenter of that earthquake hit directly underneath the foundation. And I, I, I would almost guarantee you that no matter how structurally sound the building is, it's still going to fall because whatever man makes it is not a sound shelter. But if you put your trust in the Lord, if, if you hide yourself in him when the hurricane winds of life assail, he will hold you. When life begins to rock and reel beneath your feet, he will keep you from falling. He is. He's a sound shelter in which we can hide. Not only does it show that But, but it also talks about how he is our sustaining strength. That he is our refuge and he is our strength. Brothers and sisters, when, when, when we're too weak, that, that, that's when God is strong. When life becomes too difficult, when life becomes too heavy, too much to bear, that's when God is there to provide us with his strength, enabling us to keep on going, enabling us to keep believing, enabling us to journey a little further up the road. I thought about this. challenge your muscles with weights that are a little beyond your comfort level. And, and, and so you, you put weights on the bars and you begin to lift. But, but if you want to grow, you, you have to lift to the point of exhaustion where your muscles just can't lift anymore. And, and, and that's why you, you have to have a spotter. Because as you lift under the weights, the, the spotter is overhead, and he looks down, and, and he observes you uh, to make sure that you're still able to handle the weight. As 
you lift those weights up, the spotter is looking down on you. And he continues to observe uh, to see if there's any strain, to see if at any moment I, I, I might need to step in. Uh, has, has she gotten to the point of exhaustion yet? Uh, has she reached the point where, where she just can't handle the weight anymore? Has she done everything that she's able to do? And, and I, I want to make sure that I step in at the right time so that uh, she pushes herself or he pushes himself to the point of exhaustion. But when he gets to the point where he can't lift anymore before she injures herself before he injures himself uh, the spotter will step in and, and he will grab the weights uh, and sometimes instead of just removing the weight uh, the spotter will just hold on to the weight and he will lift the weight up and down with you simultaneously I'm just trying to get you to see this morning that in God we have a divine spotter sometime life gets too heavy sometime life gets too rough but when you get to the end of your strength that's when God will step in he'll put his hands on the weight and he will lift the weights with you simultaneously helping you to get stronger helping your praise to get louder helping your hallelujah to get holier he'll just lift the weight with you and when you get too tired he will take the weight aside so that you can rise up and tell him thank you thank you thank you for being my divine spotter when life gets too rough, I need a spotter. When life gets too tough, I need a spotter. Thank you, God, for being my spotter. Last night, I needed a spotter. Right now, I need a spotter. Tomorrow, I need a spotter. God is. God is our refuge. And he is our strength. He's our divine spotter. He'll lay hands on what's too heavy for you to lift. And he may not move it every time, but when he puts his hands on it, it lightens the load. And so you can run on just a little while longer. You can lift just a little while longer. You can stay in the gym just a little while longer. Lord, you don't have to move the mountain, but just give me the strength to climb. All you got to do is get in it with me, and I'll climb, Lord. I'll keep on running. I'll keep on straining. I'll keep on striving. Ah! We have, we have, we have a divine spotter. The Lord is our refuge. And he is, he is our strength. But he is, he's a present help in time of trouble. We, we have his perpetual presence in time of trouble. Have you ever been in trouble? Have you ever needed someone to help you? Have you ever been in trouble? Have you ever had to call on the Lord? Have you ever been in trouble? Have you ever had to lift up the name of Jesus in your time of trouble? Didn't he come through? Didn't he make a way? Didn't he open doors? Didn't he lift your bowed down head? Didn't he wipe your tears? He's a very present help in time of trouble. I don't care when you call on him. Morning, noon, or night, he will answer. He's a very present help in time of trouble. He's a very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. He's a very present help in time of trouble. I, I, I love the image of that particular part of the passage because uh, that, that word trouble in the Hebrew language, it, it, it means It literally means to be squeezed. 
And what the psalmist wants us to understand is that God will get in your tight spaces with you. What the psalmist would have us appreciate is that when life is squeezing the life out of you, God will get in that tight space and he will breathe new life in you. Life sometimes, brothers and sisters, puts us in tight spaces. But God is so good. God is so merciful. God is so loving. God is so kind. He will get in your tight space with you, even if you created the tight space. There are some spaces in life that are tight because we made it. Ha! Is that right? There are some spaces in life that are tight because we made them tight. You made it tight because you married him. You made it tight because you spent the money. You made it tight because you made the decision. But even though sometimes in life we are the ones who are the guilty party, God will get in the midst of our tight spaces with us and he will make room for us to breathe. If you don't believe me, let me take you to Calvary because we were in a tight space. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We were in a tight space. We were all on death row waiting our just execution. But we were in a tight space. But in the fullness of time, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and Jesus got in our tight space. It should have been you on that cross, but Jesus was in your tight space. It should have been you hanging and dying, but Jesus was in your tight space. It should have been you with that crown of thorns on your head, but Jesus was in your tight space. It should have been you riveted in the side, but Jesus was in your tight space. It should have been you that hung and died, but Jesus was in your tight space. It should have been you put in that tomb, but Jesus was in your tight space. They sealed that tomb. It was a tight space. He was there all night Friday. It was a tight space. It was there all day Saturday. It was a tight space. He was there all Saturday night. It was a tight space, but a tight space can't hold my Jesus. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. All power in his hands. He got up with all power, all power in his hands. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things. He has given me victory. He has given me victory. Victory, victory. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be a witness for him. Witness, witness. I'm going to let my little light shine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all in my home. I'm going to let it shine up and down the road. I'm going to let it shine on my job. I'm going to let it shine at the grocery. I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. Not going to make it shine. I'm just going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. God bless you. God bless you.